Welcome everybody back to the channel. This is David from DH Trains. Hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, today we're looking at something a little different. I've got a new route I started working on just for kicks. I really like the idea behind it. This is the Union Pacific Sioux City subdivision. And uh, this layout, or this route rather, it's not going to be a layout, it's going to be a full-on route. Uh, this guy is going to be set in the 1870s or 1880s. I'm not entirely sure yet which one I want to go with. Um, I'll probably end up going with mid to late 1870s more than likely. But uh, this route is going to run from Sioux City, Iowa, north up to uh, Sheldon, Iowa. And I'm going to stay moderately true to the track plan between those two cities. Uh, same towns and everything. But um, since I'm modeling the 1870s, you know, the landscape was pretty different. And um, there's not really a whole lot of information on what kinds of happenings went around all these towns since, for example, the town that I'm starting in here only had about 25 people in it. So uh, it's going to be, I'm going to have to take quite a few liberties on this route, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun and I hope you guys will enjoy it. Uh, this will be a route that I release uh, for sale when it's finished. Um, I promise I won't charge you an arm and a leg, but uh, I really like what I kind of have planned for this. Uh, I'm going to use a feature on the download station called the car tagger which allows you to um, have like pop-up menus when you click on rail cars and you can dispatch them to different industries. Uh, and anytime you click on that rail car, it'll tell you where it needs to go. It's similar to the CMTM system, but it doesn't require as much setup. Uh, it just requires it for you to set up interactive industries, which isn't really too much of a hassle for me, although I'm not a huge fan of them. I think they need a bit of an upgrade, but it'll do for the most part. But uh, a little bit about what you're seeing right now. Uh, we are currently working on the landscape between the towns of James and Hinton, Iowa. And fun fact, uh, Hinton, Iowa was named by a settler from Hinton, West Virginia. So if you happen to have the old uh, Hinton uh, route above from the Chesapeake in Ohio on, I guess that was Tain when that came out. Whew, that was a while back. Then, uh, you know, there, this town in Iowa, when I was reading about it, was actually settled by someone from Hinton, West Virginia, who gave it the same name. So, small world, I guess. But um, I had to take some liberties on the landscape here when I was reading a, about uh, kind of what was out there in the 1870s. I, I found in the Library of Congress, I found a like 16-page journal written by one of the chief engineers of the railroad that ran through here. This was originally the St. Paul and Sioux City Railroad, which eventually became a part of um, the Illinois Central, I believe, if I remember correctly, because it was bought by the Chicago Great Western, I think. I think. I could be wrong on that. But um, when he was describing this area, he said that it was literally a desolate, treeless wasteland of grass. So more or less what I figured I would do here is closer to the towns, I would model uh, grain crops, either wheat or barley, oats, etc. And uh, between the towns, I would model just a great desolate grassy wasteland. And uh, looking at Google Maps and whatnot, Google Earth, I saw that it does have a moderate amount of hills and dells and everything else out there. So I'd created some mostly random hills and things that aren't too steep. Uh, definitely doesn't look like mountains or anything like that, but um, as you move north on this route, you are generally going to be increasing in elevation, at least initially. So um, as you look through what we're making right now, I'm currently laying out some grass like I was just talking about uh, using Turfex. Uh, I've really come to like Turfex a lot. I've been experimenting with a lot of different things with it. Um, so this grass is just wild grass, and this is what you're going to see from one end of the route to the other. Uh, all the way across here is just a little over a mile, uh, just so you get a little, bear, a little bit of a bearing. Uh, at any point in time from the tracks, you'll be able to see about a half a mile of scenery or so before you get to the edge of the map. Um, with proper use of view blocks and such, you know, you won't really ever see the edge technically. But here's a nice close-up, just checking, sure to, checking in to make sure everything looks good with the track. I am using uh, some... Uh, VR track off the download station uh, VR meaning uh, Victorian Railways uh, it is standard gauge track so don't worry even though Victorian Railways was uh, technically a broad gauge route and right here what I'm working with is uh, Turfex I'm trying to get some barley in here but 
as I work with this, I realize I just don't really like how it's looking and it takes me a while to kind of get my bearing on what I'm trying to do. You can clearly see the wheat in the background. Wheat looks really good. Uh, but this barley is only rendering uh, up close. And so I was trying to figure out how best to to work around that. And I came up with something I thought was reasonable, but still wasn't super excited about it. Um, I did decide that I probably won't film all of the route building between cities just because it's going to be a bit repetitive. Uh, but I did definitely want to video it once in case anyone was curious kind of uh, how I was going about doing it and you know wanted to know how specific or how exact I was trying to be, which quite honestly, I'm not trying to be super exact. Um, but, you know, I just assume that people are going to get tired of me building grass and wheat fields and that people aren't really going to want to see that a whole bunch of times. <laughs> so, but uh, here in a second, because uh, we just had it pulled up a minute ago, but here in a little bit, you're going to see me go back again to working on the track side and getting some of the track side details up outside of just, you know, distant scenery. But there's a couple of things I figured I would do with this route. When it comes to train routing, there's going to be staging yards at the three different areas where the route quote unquote ends. And from there, you know, if you wanted to operate a train on the route in a session, you would be able to literally just pick one and uh, tag your cars, which would probably be no more than 16 cars in a train. Uh, most trains probably wouldn't even have that many. And then um, you get a tag for them and get them moving. And I do have it set up where every town is going to have a siding and a couple of small tracks like a team track and a house track to work. Not because they necessarily would have had that back in the day, but just because I wanted to add some operational interest and I didn't want to have just a whole bunch of towns of, you know, 25 people where there was nothing to do. <laughs> so, you know, balance a little bit of creative license with the fact that these towns were incredibly small in the 1870s. Um, here I'm laying out just a little dirt path. Uh, one thing I do like about modeling this time frame is that there are no cars. And so, you know, you get staples and horses and carriages and everything else everywhere. And there just doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, routes in the trains community right now that, that model a time frame where there were no cars. There's a lot of uh, routes that model, you know, early 1900s where they have kind of a mix, but I haven't found very many. Um, dedicated routes in this time frame of course there's a couple but you know not as many as there are like modern or contemporary kind of things I did struggle a bit here with deciding if I wanted to keep uh, this texture under the track I had not been doing this and I was just experimenting to see if I wanted to I decided that I didn't really think it was a good idea and honestly I'm kind of, kind of glad I didn't use it um, if you're looking down at you know track level then, you know, the grass is going to be obscuring everything anyway, so. So here we are laying out a dirt path to get to the signal towers. So at each town, as you approach the uh, town, or the, the sidings, I guess, a thousand feet out uh, from the switch, there's going to be a home signal. And this is to allow trains in town to have space to switch without fouling any sort of block signals or anything like that. And then from the little signal house at the home signal, which there's one on each end of town, uh, you'll have 1,500 feet to get out to the distance signal, which is when a train's coming in, that's their, that'll let them know, you know, if they're good to keep going or if they're going to need to be ready to stop at the home signal or not. Um, of course, I am running telegraph wires between towns. They definitely laid those out. Those usually went in first, even before the tracks did. But uh, I guess I'm modeling kind of a concept of a timetabled railroad um, you know you have a certain time frame you need to get to the next town and if you get there early you have to sit and wait uh, if you're running late then everybody else has to sit and wait on you so it's kind of the idea behind it uh, we'll say that in the 1870s they probably did not have semaphore signals on this railroad <laughs> you probably didn't even have a whole lot of semaphores on like the Pincy you know uh, which was a super wealthy and very large railroad so you know this being a rural railroad in the middle of nowhere in Iowa you probably didn't even have signals at all except in maybe a few places but at the same time within the game in order to make things operate smoothly I decided I needed to put some stuff in so I grabbed the uh, JR semaphores uh, and you know I really like these anyway so got these all set up to operate like I like There is a lot of different times, or I guess there are a lot of different times in this video. 
use some proper English here, where you'll see me messing around with the uh, landscape and scenery and that's just because as I go through and examine things, I find parts I don't like and places that are too steep and all that jazz. And so, you know, just try to get all that situated. But uh, now that we've more or less finished up that round, I'm going to leave you guys with some cinematics. And as I post more videos, I'll tell you more about the route. But uh, I really like the idea here and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button, leave a comment. And uh, let me know what you think. Um, also, uh, you know, just thanks again for joining and watching. And hopefully, uh, if you're looking for something a little bit different in the trains world, hopefully this route might interest you. So appreciate it, guys. Thanks for joining in. Take care, and we'll see you next time.